god, she's going into the third one. That's crazy. She's not too happy. I just ripped the cricket's leg off by accident. My cousin's two parakeet. Here's Zed, my English bull terrier. Alright guys, so today I'm going to be feeding 10 different types of animals. This video is going to be a little bit different from my last feeding all my animals video because I'm not going to go too deep into detail. It's not going to be as repetitive as the last one because the last one was like a bunch of tarantulas and a bunch of other animals and it was like 45 minutes long and this one isn't going to be as long. It's not going to be as cluttered. It's just going to be 10 different types of animals in one video and I hope you guys enjoy. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and then turn on post notifications so you know whenever I upload in the future. Thanks for watching. This is my Vietnamese centipede. This thing is a monster and let's feed it before it gets crazy on me. All right, so it's about to go in for the strike. Oh, I don't know if it feels it. I might have to throw in another one in there. I need it to touch it. If it doesn't touch it, the centipede isn't gonna know that there's a bug there. So let's see if I can get one to touch it. Oops. All right, right there, right there, right there. Okay, I think it just caught either one or both of the... Oh my gosh, it's going in for the third one. That's crazy. All right, so I just ate all three crickets that I threw in there. This thing is a monster, guys. I'm telling you. Um, I'm about to order it a new cage. Actually, I did order it. It's coming in the mail. August 30th. And, um... I mean, this guy's getting a huge cage upgrade. There's like two ways of keeping these guys right because their venom is really strong so like you don't want these guys to escape so what a lot of people do which is what i'm doing right now is using a gallon jar to house them and uh when they're in a gallon jar you have to unscrew the top as you can see uh and they really just can't get out of this thing another way of keeping it is um using a screen top that slides and it has to be locking i don't do that right now but i will be doing that as soon as the new cage comes in and this cage is like the top it's a really tall cage so i could put a lot of substrate in there and uh, it won't be able to just crawl out by itself so uh, as you can see this guy's still munching on it for those of you wondering, I saw a lot of comments in the other video. I don't keep an EpiPen near me. I, that's just my personal preference. I don't feel like it's necessary. If I do get bit by this guy, I'm going straight to the hospital. No questions asked. I'm just, I mean, I'm not going to wait and see if I get a reaction or whatever. I'm just going to the hospital. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is an animal for everyone. I think they're really cool. And um, I'm always careful with him. So uh, let's move on to the next animal. All right, guys. So here's my Kenyan sand boa. She's not too happy to be taken out. Oh, she, see, she's like striking at me a little bit. Maybe she'll bite me on camera. Oh, uh, no. Oh, okay. Some of you guys would be very scared right now. I'm not too scared. Snake bites don't scare me. Actually, lizard bites scare me more than snake bites uh, that's a little fun fact about me uh, i could take a snake bite no problem but lizard bites that freaks me out a little bit all right so let's see if she wants to eat a little pinky mouse this is a pinky mouse right here um uh, i don't know if she's hungry but i mean we'll see i know i've been bothering her so maybe she won't want to eat but maybe she will oh yeah there we go she was definitely hungry <laughs> all right that's awesome oops i dropped it a little bit right here we have my cousin's two parakeets i'm taking care of them while he's away on vacation and today we're going to be giving them some water and also feeding them their seeds so here i'm going to pour in their water i already cleaned each bowl so we put in some clean water and then we have these seeds we'll drop those right in and then, I'm also going to give them one of these things. I'm not really a bird person, so I don't know too much about what I'm really giving them. But this is what they gave me, so we're going to give them one of these things. And I guess I'll just slide it through here and place it on the floor. 
They already have one in there, but it's already kind of eaten already. See? But these two little parakeets are very beautiful. There's a blue one with a white head. I mean, it's kind of white across the whole body. We can hear Zed barking in the background. It's a blue and white, and then over here we have one that's yellow and green. They're really cute. Alright, let's move on to the next animal. So here is Zed, my English Bull Terrier, and we're not going to be feeding him in this video, but I will be feeding him some treats. So let's see. Zed, pa. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Alright, let's try it again. Zed, pa. Good boy. Good boy. Leave it. Leave it. Yes, take it. Good boy. Good boy. Alright, so this is Lolly. This is my cousin's leopard gecko. I'm taking care of it for a little bit. Let's see if he wants to eat a little bit. Let's see. Oh, oh, I just ripped the cricket's leg off by accident. The antenna's bothering it. Oh, there we go. All right, so as you can see, uh, this leopard gecko loves crickets, loves mealworms, even roaches. <laughs> I mean, this leopard gecko loves to eat, and so do all my other ones. Uh, in total, right now, I'm, I'm taking care of about four. Uh, two are my cousins, and two are mine. We have Oscar, we have Tim, those are mine. Then my cousins are Lily and Lolly, and this is Lolly, so... Let's see if Lolly wants to eat one more cricket. Oh, we'll eat it. Yep, there we go. Lolly's a great eater. Like, I'm surprised. And Tim and Oscar, they're both good eaters too. But, I mean, Lolly's doing pretty good. And she's gentle with her food. That's what I like. So now let's move on to another type of animal. All right, guys. So here is a Madagascar hissing cockroach four of them actually but these aren't normal hissing cockroaches this is a special morph they're called halloween hissing cockroaches they're a little bit lighter than the normal ones i'll put a picture on the side of what the normal ones look like and uh, today they're getting oranges and uh, oranges if you guys didn't know like if you guys have a dubia colony uh oranges will promote breeding in your colony uh, I personally have a colony, I've gotten a ton of babies, and uh, having babies helps me feed my baby tarantulas, and uh, I mean, I don't know if it keeps costs down, because I still do end up buying more bugs at the pet store anyway, I'll even buy treats sometimes, like, I don't buy hornworms, and, uh, but I do, like, buy them sometimes as treats for my animals, because... I mean, buying hornworms all the time can get expensive, especially where I live. They sell them at like $3 a piece. But, and if you buy them in packs, it's a little bit cheaper. This little guy just doesn't even care about the oranges. But um, in a little bit, I'm telling you, he's going to be munching on them. All right, let's move on to the next animal. All right, guys. So here is my salmon pink bird eater tarantula. It's kind of hard for me to hold the camera in the angle that I'm holding it in right now, so it might be a little bit shaky. But uh, I have a cricket on my tongs, and let's see if she's hungry. Right there, you, could be, you couldn't even see the cricket. That's how fast she struck. That's crazy. Look at her eyes right there. Wow. I mean, this spider is beautiful. I do have three of these, but this is the biggest one out of the three. She's a beautiful spider. All right, let's move on to the next animal. Alright guys, so this is my bumblebee millipede colony. I'm going to be feeding them. They are these little millipede species. You can find them in Florida. They're actually really common. But um, people keep them as pets. And let me tell you, they make great pets. Uh, so we're going to put in some lettuce in here. On this side, we'll just fill it up with lettuce. I got a little tiny leftover pieces of lettuce. And then... Right there, if you see these little things right here, that's actually a little bit of leftover dog food from my dog Zed. Uh, and I just threw it in there just to not waste it. You give them a little bit of protein in their diet. Uh, and they like to decompose stuff, so I mean, I'll just let them decompose it. Right there, we'll put in some bananas. And this is a little bit weird, but I had some snake shed left over. 
I thought I might as well just throw it in there. I mean, they do decompose stuff. That snake shed. I don't know what that's going to do. But um, hopefully it does something good for them. And then just to top it all off, I'll mist this whole thing. Because they like it humid. So that's it. That's basically all they need. Millipedes are super easy to take care of. I've been breeding them for a while now. All these right here are younger bumblebee millipedes. Right there, you can see an older one that's actually showing the bumblebee coloration. And underground, there's a ton more. So now let's move on to the next animal. Alright guys, so this is my flat rock scorpion. I think she is gravid, so I might be getting babies soon. And uh, i got the crick in my tongs. She's been gravid for about two years now. And that's why I say I think I'm going to need babies soon. Because, as you guys know, for humans, the gestation period is nine months. But, for these guys, the gestation period is two years. So let's see if she's hungry. I don't know if she is. But, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, oh. I guess she didn't want it. I don't know. That was like a half catch, half not interested in what I have to offer. Okay, let's see. We'll try one more time. She's like grabbing it, but she's not. Oh, she grabbed my tongs. Hmm. I guess I just have to leave the cricket in there. Sorry, you guys didn't get to see her eat this time. But, um, you kind of got to sorry. I mean, she like grabbed it and then she let it go. But, um, I'll show you guys. Next, I'm going to show you guys something called the vinegaroon or vine garoon. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. But uh, it's not a scorpion or a tarantula, but it's kind of similar to a scorpion in the way that they eat. So I'll show that now. Alright guys, so right here we have my vinegaroon. This is not a scorpion or a tarantula. It's its own little thing and I'm going to be feeding it a cricket. But it is an arachnid. Oh, there we go. That was an awesome little strike. Or can you even call that a strike? A catch. We'll call it a catch. Oh no, it's getting eaten head first. I would hate to be that cricket right now, but this is nature, and um, sad things happen. <laughs> All right, and as you can see, this vine, this vinegar did lose its tail. I don't know what happened. I was breeding her. Um, she did lay an egg sac for me, but uh, I don't know. Things like this happen. My friend also keeps these, and um, his did lose their tail as well. I'm not exactly sure why. But I heard it happens from stress, and maybe it was the stress from breeding for me. But, um, I don't know. She's happy now, eating a cricket. Alright guys, if you liked the video, give it a like. Comment your favorite type of animal. And, tell me what you want to see next on my channel. Subscribe for more of these type of videos. And thanks for watching.